from Moses to Martin to Jay Scribbles, from Elijah to John the Baptist, man, they hate riddles. How y'all doing today? Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to the Jay Scribbles Music and Ministries. I thank the Lord for this day, and I certainly I th thank the Lord for you. For those tuning in before we go any further, let's say a word of prayer. Father God, we come before you. We thank you, God, for this time. We we praise you, Lord, for your love, Lord. We, we praise you for being you, God. We, we praise you, God, for what you do, Lord. We worship you for being you, God. We praise you for your mighty acts. We thank you, God, for your countenance, God, your long-suffering, God, your mercy and your grace, Father. Pray, Lord, you search us right now, Lord, from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord. You search us, God. You try our reins, God. You remove anything that's not like you, God, and you replace it with your qualities, your attributes, Father. Lord, we give you glory, Lord. Father, we come before you right now because, Lord, we want to hear a word from you, God. We want to receive a word from you, God. I, I pray, Lord, you, you will pre prepare our hearts and minds, Father, to receive from you to this, this very day, God. We pray, God, you take me, Father. You hide me behind the cross to be less of me and more of you, God. And you use me, God, to speak to this here, your people, Lord. Speak to this here, your people, Lord, so we can receive these words, apply these words, share these words, and grow, Lord, and mature in you, God, mature in you, God, and to be the very thing you've called us to be, Lord, to fulfill the very purpose for which you have designed us and you have predestinated us for, God. And we call it done right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yes, 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 what is up? We're back again. Today we're going to be talking about miracles, miracles and disguise, miracles and disguise. Miracles and disguise. The Lord, he doesn't always uh, rescue us. the moment we want him to but he's always on time the lord he often uses unexpected sources when working when working in our lives Scripture text we're going to be starting with is um, the book of uh, Exodus, second chapter, 11th, um, starting at the 11th, 11th verse, and we're going, we're going until uh, the third chapter, concluding, you know, at the um, 10th verse. So it's going to be once again, 2nd chapter, 11th verse through the 3rd chapter, the 10th verse. We're going to share with you and we're going to show you the, the context, the story, you know what the Lord was doing, the way he worked. We'll show you the, this, a miracle that was in disguise. Second chapter, 11 verse, scripture text, it reads as follows. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. 
And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down, sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the trolls to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and uh, watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of no, the shepherds. And also drew water enough for us. Plus, watch this. Drew water for us and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, Where is he? Why is it that he had left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zipporah his daughter. And she bare him a son. And he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in the uh, process of time that the king of Egypt died. Children of uh, Israel, they sighed. Sighed by reason, you know, of bondage. And they cried, and the cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Watch this. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had a respect unto them. In chapter 3, checking out the first verse. Now, Moses kept the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Check this out. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst, midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not thy hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. Bless you, Lord. For he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. 
Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me. And I've also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. God is sending him back to where he was to deliver those so that they can come the way he came and go further. Let's say that again. The Lord is sending him back to where he was to deliver the people so that he can bring them to where he came and go further. A miracle in disguise. A burning bush that was not consumed. Miracle in disguise. The Lord, he, he likes to use unexpected sources when working in our lives, too, whether it's people or thoughts or ex uh, experiences. Uh, you have to be willing to investigate and be open to God's surprises. We should not hide behind our inadequacies. You know, you check out a little uh show uh, uh verses later there in the same chapter three you see what Moses you know being talk about you know he can't really t and talk you know you know um you know he can't do this he can't do that but the Lord is not a ex Accepting him to try to hide behind the fact that he had a, a speech impediment, just like me sometimes, a lot of times, well, sometimes. There's a lot of folks mentioning, you know, the resemblance, you know, of, of, of um, Moses, you know, myself, and I'll get in, get in that, you know, a little later. But you know, the Lord does not allow him to hide behind his in his slurred speech, his speech impediment. That was not an excuse for him not to do what the Lord is calling him to do, is calling Moses to do, because when he calls you, he's going to equip you. We have to look beyond, look beyond ourselves to the great resources that God provides. He couldn't be caught up on how he sounds. He couldn't be caught up on what it looked like. He couldn't be caught up on what he'd done in his past because he didn't live there no more. He had moved on and he didn't, he didn't really realize it. No. We have to look beyond ourselves. You're in a situation, you feel like you're dealing with a you know, with temporary limitation of some sort, you feel like it, it's not looking promising, it's not looking favorable. But when you walk with God, when you are called by God, anointed by God, you're chosen by God, you're sent by God, He will meet and provide your every need. According to Scripture, He shall supply our needs from His riches and glory that's in Christ Jesus. Miracle in disguise. When you feel that God has forget, forgotten you, when you feel like God has forgotten you in your time of trouble, remember that God has a time schedule that we, we just can't see. God has a time schedule that we cannot see. As the story go on, he uh, Moses, you know, eventually returned Pharaoh. A lot of miracles was done, you know, Pharaoh. Uh, uh, and initial response from Pharaoh was, no, he's not gonna let the people go. He try to make their work a little harder. But when, when it was, excuse me, when it was all said and done. He, he let the people go. He tried to come back and follow them to get them back. And the next thing you know, the Red Sea. One of the greatest miracles in 
history known to man. The parting of the Red Sea. It was through all this, from all this, that the Red Sea happened. And they, the people of God, they walked on dry land. They walked on dry land. There is what, when it seems like it's just too difficult. When it seems like it's not going to be in your favor, always know and remember that the Lord has not forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten us. He's a bridge over troubled waters. He's shelter in a time of storm. And his time schedule is a schedule that we can't see. Next um, chapter here, we'll look at um, Joshua. So, you know, before we flip down to Joshua, before we flip down to Joshua, right? Some takeaways so far. Number one, and this one, you know, can you know, found in um, Hebrews 11 chapter, six verse, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, talking about God, because you, you, you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 chapter 6 verse once again scripture text reads as follows but with our faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the first thing we got to have faith. Watch this. Moses, he's seen a couple of his kindred. His kindred folks, he's seen them fight. He's like, yo, man, come you guys are fighting. You know what I'm saying? It was he, you know what I'm saying? Was checking the fellow, you know, that was wrong. But the whole thing was. Moses had just got through killing a man. The very next day, he seen, he seen the brethren fighting and so forth. He went there and the brethren mentioned Moses and who, who are you to judge us? What are you going to Kill me the way you killed the killed the guy yesterday. We seen. We know all about it. And Moses though ran. Moses hid. But one thing about it, Moses. You check out scriptures, multiple ones, with Moses. You know, believing, you know, in the same God. You know, even though he was raised, you know, a certain way. Moses. Never lost his faith. I'm going to prove it to you. Check out uh, Hebrews. Flip the, flip the Hebrews. Eleven chapter of Hebrews. Let's 
scripture text reads as follows, right? Okay. You flip down to 11 chapter 23rd verse. So check this out. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, now check this out specifically, right? By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Faith. But without faith it is impossible to please God. And he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is, he is a, a reward of them who diligently seek him. So the first thing is you got to have faith. How can I get faith? How can I get faith, Jay Scribbles? How can I get faith, Reverend Jason? Oh, Jay Scribbles, tell me how. I'm glad you asked. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Scripture text and reads the following starting to uh, we look at uh we look at um starting verses. We'll look at verses um we're starting we're starting uh fourteen. Scripture text reads as follows How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah said, Lord, we have believed our report. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How do you get faith? You got to hear the word of God. You got to get up under some solid, solid teaching, just like you're doing now. You hear this word, you hear it, and your faith begin to grow. You hear this word and you start to reflect upon your own life about the things that God has brought you through, and your faith, it gets stirred, it grows, it grows and it grows. Watch this. You say, well, maybe my maybe mine's a little too small for faith or something. My faith is too small. Watch this. Romans. Uh, chapter. 12, verse number 3. Maybe you're saying to yourself, you're not even sure if you're capable to have faith. Or, or you don't know if you you got any faith. Check out Romans chapter 12, starting with verse number 3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the a measure of faith. And there it is. This is why when you hear the word, you get more faith. Your faith begin to grow. Faith come by hearing the first thing. You have to tap into that faith. You have to grow that faith. You have to have faith and the faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith with an open heart. 
Moses, he was a stranger in a strange land, and man, was he open. He had no way to turn for real. He had no, uh, no uh, mechanisms. He had no defense mechanisms set up. <laughs> Moses, you know, he was a f fugitive. Moses was down for whatever. Moses was open. And therefore, when he seen the burning bush and he inquired because he got curious, and when he came close to it, the Lord began to speak to him. Because God already knew. Listen, before you was formed in your mother's womb, the Lord knew you. Be open to him. One, you got to have faith and be open to him. Next thing we notice, Moses was he was humble. This man was a prince, but he was not ashamed, ashamed to, 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 to live there in the wilderness, kicking it with Jephro in them. He wasn't he wasn't too high and mighty to, to to humble himself to live with uh, Jephro. The dude became his uh, father-in-law. Married Jethro's uh, child. It was a Torah, Jethro's daughter. He turned around and married her. He was humble enough. He was humble enough to be receptive. To what God had in store for him. So you got to have faith. Be open. Then you got to. It's got to be humility. For the Lord resists the proud. But give grace to the humble. Next. Next thing we learn from Moses. Is um. Uh, willing to wait. P patience. Check it out. Flip down to, uh, let's see here. You flip down to. Flip down to um, it came to pass. Second chapter, thirtieth. No, second chapter, twenty third. We we'll start there. It said, and it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and the cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard the groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. The next um, from chapter, starting at verse 1, it says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh uh, hither. 
cut off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place where thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are on Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I will come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them out of that land into a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me, and I have also seen the oppression with the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said, God, okay, he goes, and, you know, he, he gets, you know, uh, he gets the conversation going, you know, with the Lord. You know, he says, God, I'm most, I'm most saying unto God, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth children of Israel out of Egypt? So, <laughs> now, you check it down, you keep reading. Watch this. He had been in the wilderness keeping Jephro's flock. He wasn't concerned about, oh man, I got to do this, I got to do that. Oh man, I gotta go check on my family. <laughs> I left, you know, and my kin folks. I had to go check on them and get to know them. No, he waited patiently, and he was just flowing, you know, with the Lord, and he been in the wilderness. For quite some time. He'd been in the wilderness for so long that the the uh, uh, king, you know, the one he was running from, the king had died. He was in the wilderness. He was in the wilderness living a humble life compared to where he came from. And he did not have no, no complaints about it. Long suffering. We got to be patient. The next thing we learn from Moses is um, we must be obedient. You must be obedient. You must be obedient. So, To escape punishment for killing the Egyptians, Moses ran away to the land of Midian. He became a stranger in a foreign land, separated from his home and family. It took many years after this incident for Moses to be ready to serve God, but he tr trusted God. <coughs> Excuse me. Instead of fearing the king, Hebrews 11:27, we may feel abandoned or isolated because of something we've done. But though we feel afraid and separated, we should not give up. Moses, he didn't. He trusted God to deliver him, no matter how dark his past or bleak his future. Now, getting to Joshua. Joshua, chapter 2. <laughs> Miracle in disguise. Who would have known? Sitting there in the wilderness. In a stranger in a strange land, that the Lord was going to show up in the midst of a burning bush and, and call him. He called him. He 
anointed him, equipped him, and he seen him through. It was a miracle in disguise. Joshua, second chapter, fourth verse, scripture text, it reads as follows. Starting the well, uh, no, start with the four. Start with number one. First number one. Second chapter. Joshua, second chapter. Okay, scripture text reads as follows. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into the harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Lodged there. Okay. <laughs> okay, when we all, okay. Next verse. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men and hither to the night of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jer Jericho sent, sent you know, to Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the uh, country. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said, Thus there came men unto me, but I was not whence they were. And it came to, uh, came to pass about the time of shutting up the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went out or what not, pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were going out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. He's got to talk about it. And what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other uh, side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, here it is, he is a God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shewed you kindness, that you will also shew kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token, and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, our life for yours, if ye utter not this our uh business. And it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window for her house was upon the town wall and she dwelt upon the wall and she said unto them get you to the mountains lest the pursuers meet you and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned and afterward may you go your way. She hid them spies. She hid them spies. Why? She hid them spies, number one, from faith. As a matter of fact, she had more faith than huh. most of the children. Yeah, most of the children Israel. The lady had more faith than the children who seen the Lord perform miracles, who seen God come through for them time and time again. A Cloud by day, a pillar of fire, you no know, by night. This woman had just heard. Once again, faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. She heard about God's words and what God did. And her faith, her faith, her faith was. Rahab's 
justified in lying to say the lies of the spies? Although the Bible does not speak negatively about her lie, it is clear that lying is a sin in Hebrews 11.31. However, Rahab is commended for her faith in God. Her lies not mentioned. Several explanations have been presented. Number one, some people say God forgave Rahab's lie because of her faith. Another one say Rahab was simply deceiving the robbery and normal routine in like, you know, dealing with war. Another one said, since, you know, Rahab was not a Jew, then you know, she, she couldn't be responsible, you know, for, for, for listening to Jewish law, keeping the moral standards presented there, you know, in the, in the Torah, you know. Another one says, Rahab, she broke a lesser principle telling the truth to uh, main, uh, maintain, you know, a more um, prominent principle protecting the Lord's um, people. There may have been another way to say the lives of the Israelite spies, but under the pressure of the moment, Rahab had to make a choice. Most of us will face the limits at one time or another. We may feel that there is no perfect solution to our problem. Fortunately, God does not demand that our judgment be perfect in all situations. He simply asks us to put our trust in him and to do the best that we know how. Rahab did that and was committed for faith. That faith is very important. Very important. Sometimes the Lord breaks into life in a spectacular manner. Sometimes that's the way you do it. And sometimes a conv uh, getting, you know, um, getting, you know, um, a conversion, you know, is a, sometimes a, a Quiet manner might be quiet, no quiet conversion. Sometimes it's just loud, tremendous, and miraculous. The right way for you to come to faith in Jesus is whatever way the Lord brings you. We can't say, oh, it don't take all that. Oh, I ain't got to do all that. Why should I have to jump through hoops? Oh, you seen what? You did what? Nobody can tell you how God delivered you. You can tell that story. That's between you and God. He knows the Lord was there for you. The people you're talking to a lot of times, they weren't. You know what God did for you. And there's countless testimonies and situations, documented facts about a miraculous way the Lord show up and show out. So what's the right way for you? The right way for you is to come to faith in Jesus as whatever way the Lord brings you. Okay, let's look at um, uh, Acts. Uh, chapter 9. Chapter 9 in the book of Acts. Check this out. We're talking about miracles in disguise, man. Woo! Chapter 9, book of Acts. Starting, starting with verse number 1. Reading. Don't tell you in a week. Uh, get down to 19. Okay, starting at verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, 
What wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple, you know, Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in the vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of uh, Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that, that he might receive his sight. Uh, next verse. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man for how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all the call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must uh, suffer for, for, for my name's sake. Okay. Next verse. Um, and Ananias uh, he went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said brother Saul the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the ways thou camest hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost and immediately there fell from his eyes as it, as it had been scales and received, he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. May God have a blessing unto the readings of his word. Miracles in disguise. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Jesus said. Saul, Saul, why persecute us now? As Saul traveled to Damascus pursuing Christians, he was confronted by the risen Christ and brought face to face with the truth of, of the, uh, the gospel. Sometimes God breaks into life in a spectacular manner, and sometimes a conversion is a quiet experience. Beware of people who insist you must have a particular type of conversion experience. The right way for you to come to faith in Jesus is whatever way God brings you. Let's talk about Damascus. Damascus, it was a key commercial city. It was located about 150 miles north or east you know, of Jerusalem. You know, you know uh, and the... Um, Roman uh, province of Syria. S several trade routes linked Damascus have thought that by stamping out Christianity on you know, Damascus, he could prevent its spread to uh, uh, Saul. Excuse me. He was thinking that maybe stamping out Christianity, you know, in Damascus, he could prevent its spread to the rest of the regions and more places. We must not must not be limiting God. 
he went on this road. He swapping down and he was was doing was doing you know the Lord's will. He thought he was doing God's will. He thought he was doing God's will, but the whole time he was wrong. There was a way that seemed right unto the man, but the end there of you know the ways of death. Saul, you know, who was name was changed to um, Paul, he thought he was doing God's will. He thought he was doing God's will. And the Lord, he seen his zeal. He seen his zeal and he said, well, he's, a, he's chosen. He's a chosen, chosen vessel. And he's going to see how much he got to suffer for me. You know? Because he didn't know no better at that time. But when he seen the light, he was awakened. He came to the realization. This whole time I've been persecuting the people of God. This whole time I thought I was doing right. But man, I found out y'all. I found out y'all was doing wrong. There is no one way. There's no one way the Lord will come to you. He come how he comes. The spirit come, the spirit goes. And no man knows where it come from. And no man knows where it's going. Jesus mentioned that in um, John chapter 3. We can't limit God. We should not try to put God in a box. He show up and he show up. And a lot of times, these things be miracles in disguise. You check out the things we've been reading here. You check it out. The Lord can do anything. We just must obey. And following the Lord's leading, even the difficult peoples and places, faith in Christ brings great blessings, but often great sufferings too. We can't be afraid. He will equip us. He'll bring us to an expected end. What he requires is faith and obedience, humility and patience. And he'll see us through time and time again. We've been talking about a few situations here. A few things where God showed up and showed out unexpectedly. You can look back on your life. Me, myself, I, 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 I a lot of times reflect, you know, on my situation. Locked down. Before I was locked down, I, I, I just, I was rejected. My mom and my father left me, rejected me, abandoned me. Abandoned me to couple years old I was two years old and left me in her house for three weeks my grandmother showed up adopted me and my little my brother you know, adopted us and they planted the seed of Jesus Christ they pointed us to Christ they took us to church we was raised up in church raised up in church in the midst of a rough neighborhood Every time I came outside, I had to fight. Every time I went to school, I had to fight. A lot of times was getting jumped, jumped in gang, and it didn't destroy me, it made me stronger. My journey, I had a lot of rage built up, a lot of hurt. I still was hurt about how my mom and them could leave me. And I grew up with this hurt. Later on, my dad decided to show up, you know, I was a teenager then, you know, turn around, moving, you know, to another state. The next thing you know, I found myself in a lot of tr trouble Be because, you know, I just rage and just hurt. When I killed the man, just like Moses did, just like Moses. And they locked me down, certified me, stand trial as an adult. Went from juvenile to the men's jail, sitting there waiting trial. 
I had a strong desire in my heart to reach my fellow classmates and tell them, like, yo, this is not cool. I'm looking at life. This is not the way. Crime don't pay. Jesus is the way. And I dropped on my knees and I prayed to God. And I said, Lord, show me how to serve you. I admit I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. And I'm willing to turn away from my sinful lifestyle and follow after Jesus according to God's word. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord. I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. He rose on the third day. Throw our power in his hand. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart. Make me a new creature. Be my personal Lord and Savior. And manage my life from this day forward. I ask the Lord to fill me with the Holy Spirit from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Use me mightily. Give me a double portion of your anointing. I prayed that prayer. I ask God to show me how to serve him. So that when I send these letters out to my classmates and tell them that crime don't pay and Jesus is the way, I could be coming from a place of knowing and not just believe. And I prayed that prayer and I left it there with him. Watch this. One year later, sitting there in jail still, the trial date was getting closer. And I had been tripping and slipping and you know, I've been, you know what I'm saying, messing up again and this and that, and getting in trouble and I was sitting there writing these letters looking for legal assistance. I told myself, man, I'm not going to put the Lord in this. And I got myself in jail. I'm going to get myself out. I, I thought it was was doing something, sitting there, writing them letters, mixing lies with truth. The lie was, I kept saying, I didn't do it. I'm not, I didn't do it. Truth of the matter, the Lord Jesus, he's the way crime don't pay. And that's the truth. What that lie was just messing with me, was stressing me up about, I didn't do a crap. I know I'd done it. And I wrote them down, kept on writing these letters, and I got to my breaking point. Because see, pressure busts a pipe. I've been staying up all night working on these technicalities, police reports, and calling myself, giving my lawyer, you know, us assistance. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to fight my case my way and giving my lawyer help. It was stressing me out. I wasn't getting proper rest. I'm a teenager. You know, from 15 to 16, 16 to 17, just made 17, like, months uh, prior. And I was stressed that I got to my breaking point, and I snapped. And when I snapped, I ripped up, I ripped those letters up. I took my police report, I set those next to my cell door. I said, as a man, the next time a lawyer come visit, a lawyer can have that back. I'm through. I can't take them. I'm done. I snapped. When I ripped that up, what I didn't know is that I was freeing myself and allowing Jesus to come in fully like I had prayed to him a year prior. And when I did, Jesus came and he showed up and showed up, changed me, filled me with peace and joy, mind-blowing. I never felt joy and peace before. I don't mean glad, happy, sad, bad, excited, whatever, the typical emotions. But I had never felt the peace of God, the joy of the Lord. And it was liberating. It was mind blowing. And I was like, wow. Couldn't believe this was happening. And then I turned around, looked at my window pane, and I seen myself on stage rapping for Jesus. I'm like, wait a minute. Man, that looked just like me. It looked so real. And guess what? It was me. It was a vision. It was my first, very first vision. Jesus began to talk to me. Yeah, I died for your sins. Yes, I heard your prayer. Yes, I'm resurrected. I'm here. You want to know how to serve me? I'm going to show And he took his time and he showed me. Seven days he walked with me. Non-stop. I wasn't sleepy. I wasn't none of that. Seven days we walked and we talked. And he anointed me. He called me. Gave me a taste of heaven, the spiritual awakening, the infinite power of the Holy Ghost. He showered me with his love. And that was miraculous. And sitting in that cell block, it was a miracle in disguise. 
it was a miracle in the sky. And I realized, and I sit before you now, I'm free. Not just, you know, from my physical sh shackles and chains, but I'm free mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, and it's all because of Jesus. There's nothing too hard for God. He will do the unthinkable, the unexpected. He'll show up when you least expect it. He's a mighty God we serve. It is a mighty God we serve. I sat in that cell block, you know, and um, long story short, you know, I, I got like a uh, mercy. It was just 16 years sentence. Max my time out in um, 2010, you know, and I've been in the streets, you know, since rapping for Jesus, ministering for Jesus, leading, leading souls to Christ and traveling and moved here, you know, a few years ago on fire for Christ and the Lord, he keep his word. There's nothing too hard for him. I thought I he never was going to get out. But when mm, when 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 man said yes when excuse me when man said no the Lord says yes if you don't know him give him a try you contact me you see that number you know on the screen number on the screen you contact me you just give it to Jesus Give it to Jesus. So surrender. He's a friend that stick closer than a brother. He's a friend. Stick closer than a brother.